your February program chair. Let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ni Wong. Right hand over your heart. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ni. Excellent. Now we have a little video just before the inspirational quote that I just received word on. And it is a small video from the uh, members that went to the CAR meetings in Indian Wells last week. So let's roll the video. Roll tape. Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how It's a delight to be here. I know I feel there's a lot of family here, been here for uh, part of this organization for uh, going on my third decade, actually. So a uh, long, long time. But um, thank you for allowing us me to speak and be your spotlight this morning. Uh, many of you know that I sold my Allstate agency back in August, thinking I was going to place my license and have my staff and all there. And then something happened to the buyer. And so I had to scramble because I was still getting a lot of calls. And I said, what do I do? So I lined myself up with Lavo Insurance, which is a broker out of Alhambra, and they can do many more insurance um, 
uh, carriers and whatnot. And so it affords me the opportunities to still help those that, that want my services. Next. I was actually born in Calcutta, India. I'm a, uh, I am Chinese descent, but my, basically my parents were also born in Calcutta, India. And so, you know, America, I, I, I bleed red, white, and blue because it is our land of opportunity. Um, my dad sacrificed a ton. Uh, we were pretty, pretty um, wealthy there. But when we came here, we, we were kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say destitute, but we, we never took a vacation or had a family meal as a family, just because there were so many of us until after I was in high school. So me, but we always, my dad always provided for us and whatnot. And so uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity um, America has given. And, and so I, I don't understand all this bashing because I love this country. I'm the one with all the way to the right. <laughs> so I'm seven of eight, all right? Five, str five straight sisters and then three uh, brothers or three boys. Why is it not going? Are you the one in the back? Oops. Just, oh, there and um, there it goes. So I, I met my wife, Susan. We were married into 1889. So we are celebrating our 34th um, anniversary this Saturday. And uh, yeah, used to look young. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. It's, um, can, can you go back and I'll just click to the family one back, back there. So I have three girls. That's why five sisters, three girls. Everybody always asks, why are you so successful? I say, I've been around women all my life. I need to please them. So if you could please a woman, you could please anyone. <laughs> uh, so Cassidy, Cassidy on my right, she's, she's on her uh, final year at Concordia in Irvine. Uh, Kiara now works for me and my my family for property management and then my my uh, daughter to the very left is is kayla and she's finishing her last year as a physical therapist and uh, so and of course susan so next they always think she's my daughter i love i'm passionate about traveling so these are the countries i've been to and and uh I want to travel and see every country before my time clock is done here. So, but if you have suggestions, the more unique, the more non-Western, the better I like to uh, try that visit. I got to swim with the shark. So unlike uh, Nanette, where she did less, I did more. All right, after, after the first year of COVID, I said, forget this, I'm doing all I can. And so that was one of my trips with my daughters just last May. And then this was in last December where I got to feed wild tarpons where you actually have a fish. And I thought I had a video, but you see these hundred pound fish and they come and eat fish, little fish out of your hands. And it's pretty scary, but it's, it's, a, it's a dynamic experience. Uh, we love LA teams. My, my daughters will make great, great spouses if it's a sports guy that they marry because they know stats, they know uh, players, and they love their teams with their dads. Uh, Kayla was featured, and she actually is a pro pickleball, uh, not pickleball, a spike ball player, uh, you know, and, and she's studying, so she shouldn't be devoting that much attention to that, but they just won a tourney last weekend, um, seven, seven member team of California, won $6,000, which she only gets 900 bucks, but that's better than what I've been having to pay for when she doesn't win anything, even though she wins. Next. So I like to enjoy things. Like I said, I want to do more things. So I play basketball every Sunday with my, my church friends, although they're a half my age and they, some of them can even dunk. And we love pickleball, so as a family. One of the things that I'm passionate about in, in this latter part of my career is being able to travel to many foreign countries. I'm with an organization called Convoy of Hope where we've been participating in sh and, and support not only with our finances, but I get to go all over the world. And so I just came back from a three week stint in Nicaragua where, where this organization feeds um, uh, 75,000 daily. Uh, the whole, or we, we were into 31 countries and feed 500,000 kids every day. And that's because the poorest, if they don't have food in their belly, they don't focus on school and therefore they're always in poverty. Another thing I'm passionate about is women's initiatives because of my sisters and my girls next. So we help and, and do micro businesses and train people all over. 
this lady was, uh, so basically the average income in Nicaragua is $250 a day. We complain about that. You know, some of us make that in an hour and I'm looking at you, but um, <laughs> you know, $250 a day, but she can support her whole family in that. So we provided her a hundred chickens and the feed, and then they grow up. It takes six weeks to market and she has them all spoken for and she'll make $350. And it's, you think $350, but it's life-changing for her. And she's so proud. She did a photo presentation for, for our, our team to just show that how she's training others in that community. So our purpose is to help them and help them with, um, in their own countries rather than just give them a handout because then you, you always have somebody that's just a dependable Go next. This lady, it looks big, but it's, it's only like a four by four closet space. And so again, uh, she's able to sell things out of her, her little hut and all that. She was so proud. She, she made those welcoming uh, balloons and, and said, uh, you know, in Spanish, it just says welcome. And th this gives me gratification because we, we do things. And, and why we help the women is we found out in this organization, you give a dollar to a man in these four countries, they go and use it in drugs and unfortunately alcohol and sometimes women. You give it to the uh, women and they will raise, you'll raise up the family that she turns back almost 90 cents of every dollar back into her family. And so um, I, am, I am able to still do all these types of personal insurance. Go ahead. And I always say support those that support you guys. You know, people come and go and all that. I know Nancy and I and a few of the others have been here for, we don't want to say how long, right, Nancy? But uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I actually even remember meeting Nancy as we were both stuffing envelopes at George uh, Realty in, in uh, Alhambra, and we were both young pups now, and now we're a little older pups. But anyways, I, I think that's it, but go ahead. Thank you so much for the privilege, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Mark. When I saw that family picture of, of uh, you and your family on the beach, I was wondering uh, which one your wife was. She's so young. She, they look like all daughters. She looks so young. I, I mean, she yeah. <laughs> she does. You look young too, Mar. You do. You do. Um, <laughs> but next to his adventures, I feel like I should check my pulse because I feel like I'm a Walking Dead, or I should be in an episode of Walking Dead. <laughs> but when you mentioned pickleball, I did pick up on that. I did play that for the first time when I was in Indian Wells last week, woke up at 6 a.m., went to a pickleball uh, court and played, and it was a lot of fun. And we were talking about maybe getting a pickleball you know, event going on with WSGVR. Anyway, thank you, Mark. So now we have our affiliate introductions. Uh, if uh, everyone can line up and come towards the mic. Ready? Yes, ready. Good morning, everyone. John Wax with Snap NHD. Have a wonderful day and a great caravan. Good morning, everyone. Brandon Savransky with First American NHD. Have a great day. Hello. Happy Thursday. Lena and Carrie from U.S. Bank Home Mortgage. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Carol with West Fargo Home Loan Mortgage. Hi, my name is Phoebe Liu from Visa Bank. You have a wonderful uh, day, and uh, I'm a local commercial home loan officer. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning, <laughs> Angie Tang, First American Title. Thank you. Good morning, Sandy Franco, First American Home Warranty. Good morning, Mark Wu. I'm a single man. I love LA teams. I'm Cosmo Sanchez, and I am in lending. I got a job. <laughs> There's Mark Wu has three daughters for you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bob Chu, the champion escrow. And I'm Jacqueline Chu from champion escrow. Mark, I'm sure my son will pass the underwriting. Well, all of my children are taken. Uh, I'm Lucia Tam representing CARPA, Chinese American Real Estate Profession Associations. Good morning, everybody. My name is James Chen. You're a good neighbor, State Farm agent. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, Matthew Sher with Inter Valley Escrow. Good morning, it's Angie Wong from Lung Direct. It's a beautiful day today, so have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone. Chris Hahn with Guild Mortgage, and my son just got uh, engaged on Valentine's Day, so I'm pretty excited. Congratulations. Good morning, everybody. Richard Zaletta, ACG Funding. Good morning, Alina Chu from Glen Oaks Escrow. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, Nancy Chan, Lawyer's Title. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone, including the one in the Zoom. I'm Janet Lowe. I am with ACG Funding with Richard, uh, in the same office with Richard. Have a good day. Hello, this is Alex, your Feng Shui Master. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Ed Higuchi. I'm with New York Life, and it's been about 30 years since I was last affiliated with this the association. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Derek Talbert, CST Insurance. You guys have a great day. And last and always the least, Mark Wu with Lava Insurance for your property insurance needs. Have a delightful caravan, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for ending the caboose of in person. Now we can move on to virtually. We have Judy Chow of AA Capital Investments. Good morning, Judy, Senior Loan Officer. And uh, I uh, want everyone to have a great caravan and a great President's Day weekend. Thank you. Thank you. And the three other three on this slide are here in person. So thank you for joining us in person. Let's move on to the next is, I saw Sandy Franco here. Is she still here or did she hop on Zoom? <laughs> oh, she did? Okay, I missed her. Uh, you need a woo. Hi, good morning. You need a woo from Home Warranty of America, your 13 months home warranty. I do speak English, Chinese, Mandarin, and Indonesian. Please let me know how can I be able to help you with your warranty. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Juliana Lomag Juliana Lomaglio. Lomaglio. You don't see her. Okay. Mar Maria Howard of Old Republic Home. And Teresa Lam. <laughs> Hey, good morning. This is Teresa Lamb with Corinthian Title Company. Mark, you lead a very marvelous life. You are humanitarian and charitable, but nice to know you. Thank you. And that is uh, concludes our affiliate introductions. Please remember to support your affiliates through your transactions. And also, if you have any questions, I know they'll be happy to answer them. Next, we have Open House Caravan. Now, this is for, for Caravan. Uh, today, and we have one from Paul Tram of Paul Tram Brokerage. Oh, you're here. Oh, here you are. Good morning. Um, I have a new home for sales offer at three million ninety thousand at East Five Hundred East Road in Labar Heights. Uh, this house is custom built in nineteen ninety two. is a Spanish style home with guest house. Has a five bedroom, six bath. Approximately 7,000 square feet of livings, about one acre lot. Um, it's a gated with roundabout driveway. Um, it's a uh, three car garage. It's a wine cellar that holds over 15,000 bottles of wines. It's an impressive uh, uh, iron staircase, a backyard view of a golf course. Um, there's an outdoor spa. Um, two years ago, when this house, um, but most of the gym was uh, not accessible. The owner decided to convert one of the garage into a gym. Now they have, have access to 24 hours uh, gym at their house. So um, I have some flies, leave behind. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Go visit his open house today. Okay, now we have the best part. Just kidding, everything's really, really good. <laughs> I'd like to introduce James Clark our Government Affairs Director of WSGVR. He also goes by Jim. Uh, he, in 1993, became a full-time government relations specialist and lobbyist. He has served the real estate industry as such in many different capacities, representing realtor groups, municipalities, and rental property owners. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Jim Clark. 
Thanks, Nanette. Uh, as you can tell, that's an old picture. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, I'm actually here to uh, make a plug for the Realtor Action Fund and also introduce your next guest. So I won't be boring you with any of my local stuff, but uh, that's me. So <laughs> you can change it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mentioned the Realtor Action Fund. Uh, the presentations that you're going to see today, um, including what I do, but we're not going to talk about that today, um, a, a lot of the um, proceeds from the Realtor Action Fund kind of funnel into what we do. Um, as you know, we, we use those funds for lobbying. We use it to elect good candidates that are going to be friendly to the real estate industry. And so it's very, very important that you contribute. I, I think I'm preaching to the choir. But I, I will say that right now we have a, a, a dues billing sweepstakes that's going on. Um, if, you, if you contribute your $49 when you do your dues billing, you will be entered in a uh, contest where we'll draw five $100 Visa gift cards after it's over. The deadline is uh, February 28th. It? Oh, end of March. That's the deadline? Oh, I thought we were drawing in March. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm asking you to go back to your offices, those of you who are realtors and members of this association, and make sure that uh, your uh, fellow realtors in your offices are contributing to the RAF. And they might just be drawn as a $100 gift card um, recipient. Right now, this association is doing very, very well. Uh, West San Gabriel Valley Realtors is at about 22% participation. The goal, the CAR goal is 21. So you've already hit that. But yeah, no, you're right. It's it's very good that there, 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 there are many associations in the state that don't hit that goal. But there is still another challenge out there. We would like to see the association get to 26% participation because once you hit 26%, you get the maximum amount of return on, on your contribution that comes back to the association. So uh, we're, we're going to shoot for that 26. With that said, I want to introduce our uh, first speaker. His name is Colin Powers. He is a field rep for the California Association of Realtors. He deals, deals with politics. I can see it there, and I have it on my phone. But, uh, but um, it, it, basically, he's, he's out there spreading the word and working with our, your, your, the different associations that he's assigned. Um, he does. He, not only talks about legislative issues, but also he coordinates on helping you to promote um, uh, and get politically involved uh, and also to, helps you just develop strategies uh, for certain issues and member participation in local government. So he's available to speak to different associations, uh, committees, including local government relations, the uh, local candidate recognition. Uh, recommendation committee, and of course, your MLS breakfast meetings. But uh, he does, he travels all over Southern California. Do you have anything up north or anyway? Okay, that's up north. <laughs> but and I'm sure you don't get time to ski. But um, anyway, uh, with that said, I think, if, Colin, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, not just what you do, that would be great. But in, in, in the meantime, um, it's my it's my privilege to um, introduce Colin Powers from CAR. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I like that. Well, so again, my name is Colin Powers, and I am your government affairs field representative from the California Association of Realtors. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I worked in the state legislature for about six years before coming to CAR about two years ago. Um, I worked in, in Sacramento um, as a legislative staffer and in the district, or in several districts across Orange County as a district staffer. So I've been around. I've seen uh, how legislation goes through the Capitol, and I've seen how you implement it in a district. And I've also managed a, a campaign, my most recent one being in the 2020 cycle. And in my spare time, I actually coach uh, uh, water polo and swim at my alma mater, your Belinda High School. Fun fact about me. Yeah. Um, today, I have uh, quite a thorough presentation for you that I'm going to try and get through in, in about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna to touch on a lot of different legislation, CAR's involvement with California budget this year, um, some bad legislation that we were able to stop, some good guys, some good legislation that we were able to pass, 
and we're going to get into a little bit of 2023 and uh, give you some of the bills that actually came out of Indian Wells so you can see kind of the direction that CAR is heading for this year. But we do remember we are early in the legislative cycle, so a lot can change, a lot can be added, um, and a lot of them at the moment are just kind of ideas that haven't really been fleshed out yet with language and whatnot. So let's get into it. Um, for starters, we have the 2022 California budget. And this year, for the first time ever, CAR was um, incredibly engaged in, the, uh, in making a large budget ask. We have been doing this in the past as we approached the California legislature for the first time in 2018 um, to uh, ask that they allocate um, more funds to assist homeowners with low-cost ADU construction loans. But this was the first time that we approached um, with a, a coalition that we joined and helped lead um, to request that the legislature allocate $400 million to affordable owner-occupied workforce housing development and $200 million for down payment assistance programs. Like I said, this was kind of our first ask, so we didn't really know how this was going to go. We didn't have a, have a guidebook to say, oh, this is how it's going to play out. But I will say we are very pleased with our results because we were actually able to surpass our goal and obtain $900 million in the 2022 state budget, which is a huge deal for realtors and Californians. In this new budget, um, we were able to secure $500 million to uh, fund the new California Dream for All program. We got $50 million to fund low-cost loans to homeowners seeking to construct ADUs. And we were able to obtain another $350 million to CalHome to facilitate the construction of new homes for low-income families. So like I said, this was our first time in this arena. I can say with confidence that I don't think this will be our last. So here's, to, here's to the next budget. I think it's going to be great. And moving on, um, I'll, I'll go through this pretty quick, but these were the bad guys of 2020. We had 17 major pieces of legislation uh, that would have dramatically changed real estate in California for the worse. One bill I always love talking about, the, the one bill I love to hate the most. Uh, we had AB 1771, which, have, which would have added a 25% sales tax on any home sold within the first seven years of purchase. That wow is the result I always get. It is, uh, that would have been a doozy to say the least. We were able to stop that bill before it even got to committee, which is a huge win. We were, we were able to stop other bills like AB 2469, which would have established a statewide rental registry costing property owners time, money, and resources in, in complying with a, uh, with a new state mandate. We were able to stop AB 854 and AB 2050, which would have weakened the Ellis Act. If you're not familiar, the Ellis Act was put into place as a way for a landlord to effectively go out of business. If they you know, had monetary issues, uh, health issues, they just wanted to move into a unit or get out altogether, the list goes on. They had the opportunity to use the Ellis Act to do that. This bill wanted to weaken it by mandating that a property owner had to stay in business for five years before being able to do whatever they wanted with their property, Eff effectively holding the property owner hostage in their own unit. We were able to defeat these bills as well, thanks to the help of our members, because those were actually red alert bills. So huge. Uh, those are the only three I'm going to talk about. I, we'd be here for a long time, and I think I'd put you all to sleep if I talked about all 17. Um, but it's huge uh, a year this year in stopping this legislation and huge thanks to the members that participated in Red Alerts and stopping this bad legislation. So here's to you. I'm going to clap for you right now. Um, moving on. We all, so let's get into the good guys. These are some of our sponsored legislation uh, that passed this year. And I'm only going to talk about one from this list because it's my favorite. Uh, we had AB 2170 by Assemblymember Grayson. What this bill uh, will do is prohibit GSEs or government-sponsored entities like Fannie Mae or Fre Freddie Mac from um, selling foreclosed properties in bulk to large Wall Street investors and institutions. Instead, for the first 30 days, these homes are going to have to be marketed exclusively to potential owner-occupants and nonprofits in order to give um, working-class families, first-time home buyers, a chance to live in the communities that they work and contribute to. So we're really excited about this bill as well. Um, and moving on, some of our supported bills this year, um, SB6 and AB2011 that passed. Uh, what If you ever heard the term adaptive reuse, these are your guys. SB6 and AB2011 will help streamline the conversion of existing retail space, office space, malls, and help streamline that conversion into making that housing, like condominiums, apartment, making use of the structure that we already have built 
to help uh, alleviate some of the housing crisis by uh, bypassing some of CEQA to get that built. So we're really excited about those bills. Um, another one on here that might be interesting to you is AB 2559, uh, which deals with reusable tenant screening reports. Um, who all knows about reusable tenant screening reports? Okay, got it. Uh, so basically, uh, to give you some background, if I were to apply to a couple uh, to live in a apartment complex, um, I can pay between twenty three and I believe fifty five dollars to submit my application. Um, reusable. If I applied to three apartment complexes and it was fifty dollars to apply, that's one hundred fifty dollars. So as you can see, that cost can rise. Reusable tenant screening reports were uh, an idea to help alleviate some of this cost on the potential tenant by uh, basically paying one flat rate to a company and then being able to send that to X amount of property owners. Um, property owners had some concerns about this because they, who knows, maybe it could be tampered with. It's not mine. I don't know this company. There's a lot of concerns about this uh, reusable tenant screening report. Um, so what CAR did is we were not on board with this at first because it was man mandated that property owners would have to accept this. We at CAR went out and obtained amendments to make RTSRs completely voluntary. So if you are a property owner and you do want to accept these, you can. And if you don't, you don't have to. Everybody wins. So that is AB 2559, and that also passed this past year. Uh, to get into some of the new legislation from, that we talked about last week at Indian Wells, that video was amazing, by the way. Shout out to whoever put that together. It was a great time. Um, we... Uh, and again, these are not all fleshed out. These ideas are still kind of new. Changes can be made. Um, but we will be supporting a proposed proposition this year to require local municipalities to secure a two-thirds vote on any measure requiring raise or that would increase taxes. Some of you might be thinking, doesn't that already exist? And I had that same thought too. It actually doesn't. There is a uh, There was a decision in a case in 2021, I believe, where some special taxes were granted a 50 plus one vote. Um, what this bill would do is just reconform to Prop 218 and um, make it a flat rate, two-thirds increase taxes. So we'll see how that bill or how that prop goes. Excited to see um, how that plays out. We'll also be sponsoring some different legislation this year. Um, we're going to sponsor some legislation to enact a state-mandated remote online notarization system. And that's something we've been talking about for a while, so it'll be cool to finally uh, get the language for that. We're also going to be sponsoring legislation to update the natural hazard disclosure uh, to include uh, information related to defensible space mandates imposed on parcels in high fire severity zones. Very exciting. And uh, another thing we're going to be doing is sponsoring legislation to facilitate greater access to educational resources on revocable living trusts for low and moderate income homeowners um, in order to provide them with the education um, and some additional resources to help them learn more about this and how to uh, create generational wealth over the generations and uh, create more housing that way. So these are some of those bills. We'll also be supporting a bill, AB 62, which will establish a statewide goal to increase above and below groundwater storage by 3.7 million acre feet by the year 2030 and 4 million acre feet by the year 2040. For sure could have used this a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I guess we'll uh, look through it to the future here. Um, this is going to be done uh, in part from the Department of Water Resources um, and the State Water Control Board, or State Water Resources Control Board, to design and implement this, and um, that will be huge for our state. As if by the year 2040, that should be around a 20% increase to our current storage here in California as a, as a whole, um, which we could still do better. But it's a start and something that we can work on together. Um, Three things that I have to mention at every outreach. It's very exciting stuff. Vote, act, and invest. Um, if you are not registered to vote, I really encourage you to do so. It's one of the most important things that we can do as members or as realtors. We want to make sure that people that we elect know and reflect realtor values. Um, if you're not registered, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you to the Secretary of State's website where you can do that right now in a matter of minutes. Next is act. Um, this is incredibly important. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about red alerts right now because I think there is a uh, misconception. Oh, actually, first off, I'm gonna ask, who knows about red alerts? Raise a hand. Okay, so, so quick background. A red alert is what happens when our, our lobbyists, when um, uh, 
they can't stop a bill and it's the 11th hour. It's a bad bill that's going to have a negative impact on Californians and it's going to the floor and we need to mobilize our members to call their legislators or email their legislators to alert them to this threat. If we send out a red alert, it is our Hail Mary. It is the uh, most one of the most important things you can do as a member is to respond to it and let your legislator know how important this bill is to your industry and your community. Um, a lot of people think when a red alert goes out, however, that it goes out to all 217,000 members here in California. And that's not the case. Through our key contact program, through our lobbyists, we have, I, when we send out a red alert, we identify between five to 15 legislators that we think can flip. So if they are on, supporting a bill, we think we can get these members to switch to a neutral or an opposed position. So if you do see a red alert, that's not because you know, your member is, is good, that's because you, you are it. You are our last hope. So if you do see that come into your email, please take a second to respond. It goes a very long way, and we would greatly appreciate it. And moving on, contribute, like uh, what Jim said, to the RAF, it's a, a lot of people, um, the, way, the best way I like to explain it is we buy insurance on a lot of things, our homes, our cars, our pets sometimes, but what about our business? our industry. You know, I hope you all love what you do and I love working alongside you, but a lot of people don't know what it is exactly realtors do. And a lot and a lot of those people are elected into office. This gives us a seat at the table. This makes this is what creates um such a creates such a powerful force behind the realtors in Sacramento, and I cannot encourage you enough to to contribute to the RF because it goes a very long way. Just in 2022, we were able to save each realtor over $10,000 and each firm over $15,000, um, thanks to us stopping potentially bad legislation. So it goes a very long way. Uh, if you do want to contribute, I'd recommend talking to your local association. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out with that. And uh, with that, let's get into some other fun stuff. I'm going to end with this. Other ways to get involved, if I've said anything today that uh, you thought was, was cool or you, you want to get more involved, you can. Uh, we have the Unlocking California Politics podcast, which is a resource from CAR. Um, it's all moderated by our Senior Vice President of Government Affairs, Sanjay Wagle. Um, the most recent episode dives into essentially the same presentation I just gave you, but with the lobbyists that actually had a hand in passing the legislation and in stopping the legislation. We have episodes with um, uh, that dealt with the gubernatorial recall. We have episodes with top political consultants um, from the Democratic and Republican parties. Um, it's a really cool uh, resource that we have. It's available on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. And if you scan that QR code, it'll take you right there. And last but not least, the Legislative Activist Program. Um, this is a new resource that we have at, well, newer resource that we have at CAR. Um, it's for members who are interested in government affairs and want to hear about these bills as they progress from the committee stages onto the floor. Um, this is actually a program that um, I, I kind of lead. Um, I try to send out an email twice a month with all this information on it. Um, I include new events at CAR, um, uh, interesting things that you guys might find. Um, and also, if you, if you do join, um, that logo in the top right, uh, that's, that's not just a logo. That's actually a lapel pin designed by yours truly. And it's pretty cool if I do say so myself. So if you do sign up with the Google form, I do have the lapel pins with me and you do get one. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool, unique way to stand out and show that you are a legislative activist for CAR, um, and we'd love to have you. And with that, um, I am done. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for uh, Mr. Powers? Uh, please uh, come up to the mic in the front, in the middle right here, in front of the camera, or right next to Nancy Chan. Thank you. <laughs> There's our mic. We'd like uh, whoever has questions just to go ahead and go up there. It's your call. Well, it's not. Oh, yes, oh, it is. There we go. <laughs> um, this might be a dumb question, but um, I see like with the red alert and a few other things you talked about, um, bad legislation. How do these bad bills end up there in the first place? It's a great question and, and a long winded question. Uh, yeah, they're put forth by a truly, in my opinion, and I might be speaking out of turn, but bad legislators that don't understand our, our needs and, and the importance of real estate to the state of California. Um, they see 
chances to fix things that they deem as problems, um, when in truth they are kind of the tenants of holding California together. And uh, the problem with this bad legislation is that these legislators keep getting elected, um, but it's our job to vote it down when we see it. We will probably see things like zombie bills this year, which I didn't talk about, but um, these are bills like that AB 854 and 2050 that would have weakened the Ellis Act. I've been at CAR for two years. The same legislator has introduced versions of those bills four times. He believes that the Ellis Act needs to go, and he is going to fight for that until he eventually loses one day. Um, it's a long process, but thanks to our political team, thanks to our lobbying team, um, we will keep working at it. And that's kind of the importance of RAF is electing legislators that do understand and reflect realtor values. And that's why we actually have been so successful in killing this legislation, because we do such a good job at that. That one bad apple, he doesn't have a lot of power. So yeah, exactly, get out and vote. What's the underwater, yeah. you mentioned about underwater storage. Mm -hmm. what, what's that mean? Underwater storage uh, capacity, what's that mean? Yeah, so basically we, in California, we save water in reservoirs and in underground reservoirs. Um, what that's gonna do, what that bill is gonna do is it sets a goal of building the infrastructure here in California to be able to save this extra rainwater, this extra snowpack, oh, so that we'll have water um, in the drought seasons. Also, uh, I'm sick of like all the all those policy favorable to the tenant. Like uh, they have been extending, extending, and ex extending, and uh, nothing has been done more about the landlord. Mm -hmm. So, what can we do more for them? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, give me that. <laughs> it's on now. Oh, okay. Um, so let me repeat the question. Um, you were asking about the eviction moratorium that was put in place by the county and the, and the city. The city has lifted theirs, but the county's is still in place. We thought we had a beat. And the reason I'm talking to you about it is because I'm, I'm, your, I'm your local guy. So, um, but um, we, uh, we, had it, we had it sunsetting at the end of uh, last year. And then we had a new supervisor come in. Her name is Lindsay Horvath, and she took the place of Sheila Kuehl, who was kind of our arch enemy when it comes to private property rights and in our industry. Um, she's no better, but uh, she brought, you know, kind of brought it back up and wanted to extend it uh, to uh, the end of January. But they also called for a, a study to, to see what the economic climate was all about. And then at that, so at that time, um, there were three, three of the supervisors did not want to extend it further than January, um, but uh, two did. They proposed that it be extended till June of 2023, the end of June. Um, the chair kind of got into a trap when she said, no, I'm not going to do that. I might take two months. And they said, okay, we'll take it. <laughs> so uh, in actuality, the, the, um, the, moratorium on eviction uh, is uh, going to run through the end of March. However, during that whole debate, we were able to get $45 million from the county set aside for landlords to, uh, to uh, pay for back rents. So there's a, there's a, you asked what we're doing for the landlords. It's probably a drop in the bucket, uh, but it was, it was something that we didn't have before. So we're, we're looking at those things all the time because we just don't think that the tenants are ever going to catch up. And, you know, ultimately they might, you know, be, uh, uh, they're either going to be uh, finding a new apartment or they're going to take all the money they saved and put a down payment on the house, which, which would be good for you guys. Sure. I think we're okay. Hey, yes. Hi. Thank you, Colin. Really interesting. And Dave, this is, uh, Jim, this is for you. Um, <laughs> uh, talk about local. What are we going to do? I, I don't have the full understanding, and I hope you would explain to us that LA City is considering offering attorneys for the tenants' rights. So if you can uh, yeah, tell us I, how I, close that is. I, and I used to be very, on. very on top of the things that are going on in LA. In LA City, has gotten really, really bad. Um, mm -hmm. There is talk about it. I have not heard of the legislation through my colleague, Gerard uh, 
you know, over over at uh, Greater LA. Right. But Lorraine, I can get that information for you. Yeah, it's I just that we border LA City. Oh, I know, and, <laughs> so things, and things roll over southern. a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I hear you. But by the way, LA is just crazy now. And <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad, you know, I don't have to really deal with it all that much, but you're right. We proactively need to watch what's going on in other neighboring cities because yeah. those ideas might roll into some of ours. Thank you. So. My pleasure. So uh, we'll get moving here because I think we're short on time. But there's one more. We have one more speaker who is from the National Association of Realtors. His name is Zach Rubin McCary. He's the manager of RPAC Disbursements um, and a senior political rep uh, at NAR. He serves the states of uh, American Samoa, <laughs> California, Hawaii, Guam, which I never got to go to, <laughs> New York, New Jersey. Uh, Washington, Oregon, Ohio, Alaska, Delaware, North and South Dakota. And prior to working at NAR, Zach worked on federal campaigns across the country and as a legislative staffer in Congress for Representative Sean Patrick Maloney of New York. Uh, um, being at NAR is like coming back home for him because when he was in college, he had an internship in the Government Affairs Department, and uh, he had since graduated from, and I'll say it correctly, Zach, the Ohio State University. I, 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 ha I have I have friends that went to Ohio State. They say no, 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 no. It's the Ohio State University. So with that, please welcome uh, Zach Rubin McCary from NAR. Well, I, I appreciate the welcome and you all having me today. And the V is that important. I I put it into my bio uh, because um, when it wasn't in there, people made a point of including it. So I just figure you got to own it, and uh, you know that that's where we are. And, like you, Jim, I have a photo here that's been haunting me for some time as well. So that was on my first day at NAR when I got rehired uh, six years ago. Uh, a little bit of background uh, about myself you just heard. I currently cover uh, all 14 of those states while I've been at NAR. It's been over 30, so I have a lot of different experiences here. But um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Jim and Colin both have my contact information. I'll also put it in the chat for those of you virtual. Uh, you know, I'm here to be a resource for you all. I know we're a little pressed for time, so I want to get right into some of these legislative updates. Um, so just kind of an agenda of things we're going to uh, I'll go through. I'll, I'll focus mainly on the legislative side of it, uh, mainly because that that stuff's going to be what you're uh, engaging with the next couple months. Um, so the big issues this Congress we're keeping an eye on. Uh, first, uh, they're going to be fiscal issues. So things like raising the debt limit. Um, and funding the government. Uh, those are going to be two major deadlines this year that are going to really drive how much legislative uh, policy, how much stuff passed beyond that. So those are going to be two pretty big uh, discussion items and possibly legislative fights that happen later this year. Uh, we're also going to be talking about taxes. That's a little bit more forward looking, but it's something that uh, is going to be very much on the docket. Uh, data privacy is also something increasingly that we're uh, working on at the federal level. Uh, tenant issues. Uh, for those of you uh, who've been paying attention to this, the White House have made an announcement uh, last month about this, and then housing supply. So those are kind of the top ones, and I'll, I'll just jump right in. Uh, the first one, fiscal issues. So uh, what does that mean for you all? Um, number one, the debt limit. That is going to be hit at some point this summer. We're not exactly sure the exact timeline, but we'll know for sure or have a better sense of it, I should say, after tax season. We'll see how much uh, revenue the government brings in and how long that might last. But essentially, the debt limit, it's just the amount of money the U.S. government is authorized to borrow to pay already existing spending. So this is spending that the government, or sorry, I should say Congress has already passed. They've already authorized it. Um, this uh, th That is what they're fighting over. So um, basically, um, to pay those existing bills, they need to raise the limit. So uh, that'll likely happen later this summer, but we uh, are monitoring this because obviously any sort of impact on the U.S. Uh, government's credit rating or that sort of thing could impact the broader economy. So we're you know watching that very closely. We're hopeful that there will be a deal there. Um, the uh, the uh, other thing, uh, the spending uh, deal, um, uh, sorry, at the end of September, the 31st, the government spending deal will run out. So that will be uh, important for a number of programs that we care about, housing-related programs, things like the Community Development Block Grant, um, 
you know, the home program, all of these, they get funding through the government. So when the funding lapses and the government shuts down, those sorts of things are impacted. The other major program that we're monitoring here that could get impacted is the National Flood Insurance Program. So uh, the main reason uh, that would be impacted is if the government was to shut down, it would uh, it would really uh, throw a wrench in a lot of deals that require flood insurance because it would, since the flood insurance program is tied to the funding of the government, it would need to pass for the flood insurance uh, program to stay uh, operating. So uh, our research has shown that thousands of deals per day would would not happen because of that. So you know we're very concerned about that. We're making sure to make our um, legislators well aware of that, uh, and hopefully we will avoid a crisis there. And I, I think we will. Uh, ultimately, it's just they like uh, they like to wait to the last minute on these things. Uh, moving on to taxes. Uh, there are uh, 23 provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that are set to expire at the end of 2025. Uh, so these are things like the, the cap on the state and local tax deduction uh, that would go away. Uh, the increase in the child tax credit would also phase out. Uh, also, the uh, reduction in income tax rates would also go away. So a good way to think about this is the tax code would go back to the way it was prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act being passed. So um, there are a lot of things in here that people care about, and there are a lot of things that um, you know could drive a potential tax deal. I think right now, most of it is going to be conversation. I think all, both sides of the aisle are waiting to see how the elections play out and who's in the White House before they look to address this. But it's something that I think you're going to hear about a lot more. Uh, moving on to data privacy. Um, there are ongoing discussions on this. I would say primarily these discussions are focused on major tech companies. Uh, there are bipartisan interests in this for different reasons, but there is agreement that there might need to be something done about this. Uh, realtors aren't the focus, but uh, given the access to data and the usage of tech platforms and that sort of thing that our members do use in their business, they, our members could be roped in here. So it's something we are uh, watching very closely and we're continuing to engage with our industry partners on. Um, and then touching briefly on the White House Tenant Protection Plan, um, which is uh, which was released towards the end of January. Uh, essentially what it is, it's a framework from the White House to basically uh, give suggestions and guidelines to all of the government agencies uh, how the White House thinks about tenant protection issues. Um, these issues uh, you know, have been bubbling up in a lot of states. Uh, it's something that the White House has been hearing a lot about. Uh, the, I think the key things you know, to tell all you all, um, these are kind of four uh, tenants that we've been stressing in our meetings. Our president, uh, Kenny, met with the administration about this. We're uh, continuing to work with the ad administration and all of these agencies on this as well. It's this is just guidelines. There isn't anything set in stone yet. So we're continuing to work with agencies to make sure, uh, you know, if there is anything enacted that, um, you know, it doesn't disrupt the market and create more hardships because the last few years have been really hard on, uh, on all of, you know, property managers and people like our members who, you know, may own a few properties, but they aren't by any means a large, you know, corporate landlord. Um, Moving on to housing supply, this is one we've been talking about a lot lately. Uh, over the last few years, it's really become a, a really uh, salient issue in DC. Uh, it's bipartisan, which is always a nice place for us to be. I think it's a place where we, we can provide a lot of value as an organization. Um, the other thing is uh, a lot of the solutions to this are focused on the tax side of things. Um, so those provisions may not happen towards until the end of 2025 when people are looking at broader tax uh, legislation. Uh, and the other one, uh, it seems kind of similarly to California, there is some interest in adaptive reuse and uh, commercial conversions. Uh, this is a bill, um, or there's a number of bills on this, but this is something that I think people are increasingly interested in, especially as, uh, you know, remote work is, you know, still kind of here. Uh, people are, are still working remotely. DC, for example, is very high. Uh, so it's something that's really been a big topic of discussion. Um, I'll jump ahead uh, to the next slide to just 
kind of the backdrop on uh, the election cycle. Um, if you want to hop ahead one slide, please. Yep, thank you. Um, the Senate, uh, currently controlled by Democrats, they have a uh, tough re-election fight to keep it. Uh, they only have one seat majority. Uh, they have a number of challenging fights uh, to keep to hold on to seats, but 20 of 34 seats are up for re-election or Democratic, so including uh, one of them in um, California. Uh, so that also combined with it being a presidential year could lead to a number of uh, senators running. So it's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. It also makes it hard to pass legislation next year. You'll have a lot of senators who are in Iowa, who are visiting uh, key states, and who aren't there to vote. Um, so I think a lot of legislation is going to happen this year, and it's going to slow down a lot next year. And then uh, on the House side, we'll see if Republicans are able to hold on to things. It's going to be it's going to be a tight fight. They won a lot of seats that I think Democrats feel optimistic they can take back. So it'll be interesting to see that. Um, and lastly, just a few things I wanted to go over with you all about um, the upcoming uh, realtor legislative meetings in DC in May. Uh, for anybody who's attending, it's a little bit different this year. We'll have a new location. It's at the uh, Washington Convention Center. It's a great location. It's central in DC. There's a lot of great restaurants and hotels around there to stay. Uh, it's also very close to Capitol Hill. Uh, so if you do have meetings up there, it'll be easy to get to and from. Uh, if you want more information, I urge you to check out legislative.realtor, our website. Uh, you can register on there, which is now available. It opened yesterday. Uh, and you can also get all sorts of schedule information and other frequently asked questions answered there. Uh, the other big addition to this is the Riding with the Brand National, national Block Party. Uh, we... Uh, this year, as part of the Riding with the Brand initiative, there'll be a big stop of the bus in D.C. at the Nationals Park, which is where the you know Washington Nationals baseball team plays. It's a great venue. Uh, should be a really good event. And if you're in D.C., I'd urge you to come. It should be a lot of fun with you know food, drink, a band, all sorts of uh, activities on the field. Uh, might even be able to get to use the batting cages, all sorts of things. So um, you know, it, it should be a good time. Um, but with that, I want to say thank you uh, for having me today. And, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out if you ever need anything. You know, I'm here to be a resource for you all. Thank you so much, Zach. Let's give a nice thank you with applause for both our speakers, Zach and Colin. Now, Zach, I do apologize that we are very, very short on time. I wish we had more time for your, oh, your Q&A. I do apologize, but I, I think you mentioned that you were putting, be putting your contact information on the chat box for those yep. uh, to reach you, if that's okay, to reach you for questions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll thank you right so now. much. And Colin will be staying a short uh, after for a little bit. If anybody has any additional questions for him, he will be uh, staying shortly um, after the meeting for for, um, for all of you to ask questions. I'm going to zip through the rest of the meeting really quickly. And we're gonna move on to the attendance drawing. So you must be present in person here. The pot today is $175. Let's start the wheel. That's for different. Okay, good luck everyone. If nobody wins this one, an additional $25 gets added for next week's drawing. So 175 today. Here we go. Bing Hui Liu. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correct, correctly. Bing Hui Liu. No Bing Hui. Okay, so sorry about that. It will be $200 next week. And now for our Amazon gift card drawings. Everybody put their business card into the uh, Tumblr. Go ahead, Shun, and pull out three business cards for three drawings of $25 each. Oh, this sounds great. Our guest speaker, Colin, will pull the winning, will winning uh, drawing. Three, pick three. Pick mine, Colin. Vince Veneziano for our first winner. Congratulations, Vince. Our next winner is Jean Lee, congratulations, Jean. Oh, there she is, let's, okay. One more. 
Jean Lee. That was the second one, Jean Lee. But what is it? Kimberly is our third winner. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. Next, remember to join us for education classes. We have four coming. It is uh, the license renewal and meet and learn feng shui tips for 2023. That's next Tuesday. Zip form training is also next Monday. And CRMLS virtual training matrix next Wednesday. Oh, actually, that's not next Wednesday. That's March 1st. Okay, now we have our 50-50 drawing. Where is our 50-50 tickets? What is the pot? $36. Lounge at Carl's Jr. for one person. 222-1929. We have a double winner today. So Vince won our 50-50. We'll bring it to you, Vince. After our small deduction. <laughs> okay. We have one more open pitch. This is not a caravan, but this is a pitch uh, from Shen Zhang. Good morning, everyone. Shen Zhang with VMAC My Home uh, in Temple City. Uh, this beautiful town home built in 2021, so it's only uh, two years old. Um, the complex has 12 uh, luxury town homes. Uh, it's two uh, ensuite bedroom with two and a half bathroom. Um, Still, uh, stainless steel appliances with six burners, so great uh, quality uh, stuff in there. Um, two car garage with bonus storage, uh, electric car charging ready. So for the ones that you have EV car, it's ready for you. And for the ones that are thinking about it, it's ready for you as well. It's only asking for a 60 low HOA 250. Uh, we will be hosting open houses this weekend, 225. Stop by and come visit me. Thank you. Thank you, Shan. Okay, that's our last for the agenda. Please join us again next week on Thursday, the 23rd. Have a great day, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.